Hello everyone, welcome back for another video in our best practices uh, storage architecture series we've been doing. In our first video that we shot, we spoke very high level and architecturally about the best practice concepts for dealing with your storage architecture. Mainly we focused that around not the technology, but more around the, the various perils that you face when it comes to keeping your data safe. These perils include hardware failure of drives, of pieces like that, of accidental deletion or data corruption, um, of viruses attacking your files and crypto locking them, or, or bad actors attacking your server and getting in where they shouldn't, or the big scary one, the, 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 the flood, the fire, the meteor attack on the storage. And what we wanted to present with, with that first video was the idea of you should pick your storage technologies and solutions around solving those perils, keeping your data safe. But very high level, very architectural, uh, we're at a whiteboard and more hand waving than actual work. <laughs> so what we're going to do in the next series of videos or the next set of videos we're going to do here, we're going to break down each of those perils and how you can use a, a 45 drive storage server, the Houston UI, and you can bring yourself up to be ready to protect against all of those. Okay, so for today's video, we're talking about protection against catastrophic failures such as fire, floods, a meteor attack by using offsite backups, whether to the cloud or to another server somewhere else than your building. Let's get into it. Now on our final peril, the metaphorical meteor strike, the, the fire, the flood, the catastrophic event that erases every other good line of defense that you put in place around your storage, your data, your important, important data, the erasure of your data center, the disappearance of the building, housing, all of it, right? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Obviously the metaphorical meteor strike is a little, uh, uh, dramatic. I always say personally, it's like, I think we've got bigger problems. <laughs> if we have a meteor land and take everything out. But you get the point. The point is, it's the last peril to consider. So with all that scary stuff said, all is not lost. There is a way to protect against the complete loss of the building or or structure housing your data. We're just gonna put the data somewhere else because if that happens, we can restore from there. So how do we do that? Well, you can put it up in the cloud using a cloud service. You can put it into another storage server, server in another offsite location. Um, anyway, how do you do that? Well, join me at this screen. I'll show you how we can set those up for Houston and that'll finally be the last piece in keeping your data safe from all those scary perils out there. Okay, here we are sitting at the uh, overview screen of our Houston um, interface with the same server that we've been using for the entirety of this series. Remember, we've got our ZFS pools, we've got our uh, auto, our, um, sorry, our automated scrubs and our snaps running on that pool, uh, snap shields running on this server. We've got everything. We've got all our perils protected, but now we're going to do our last one. So let's uh, let's set the scene, uh, paint a picture. What 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 what's the scenario we're working in? So. The, the physicist called in and said, there is an asteroid coming. It is going to be here in a week. And unfortunately, fortunately for everyone, unfortunately for you, it's just going to take out the one data center that's got your server in it. So the good news is we're all going to continue, but your data isn't. So we're going to have to get this somewhere else. Okay, I was joking a bit there, but the point is what we got going on is you've got this server set up and maybe it's, it's in the server room of your building and you've rented out a data center location and you've got another storinator over there that's big enough to hold all your data that we want to send over and you want to come put it up in the cloud. So you, you uh, let's say you've uh, got an account with Backblaze B2 and you want to put it in some of their cloud services. So let's, let's show you how to create a task to accomplish both of those things. So... First, we'll go to add new task, right? And we'll call this one the offsite ZFS rep. And we'll go with ZFS replication task. And we'll want to select our pool. So active, this is the one we've been working with. And I want everything on here. 
Um, I want the source retention policy is going to tell us how long to keep the source snapshots. I'm, I want to keep it all. I'm, um, how you say, nervous. Uh, so who's my host? I want to send it to my other uh, server. So test it. SSH, okay, it can contact my uh, my other server and it knows it's got a Z pool over there. So now it'll adequately or properly populate this pool drop down. This is the other location and I want to send that to the tank pool over there. And maybe I want to send it to, um, I will send it to data. And again, same thing, I want to keep everything. If you want to change any custom stuff or anything like that, you can do that, but by default, you don't need to. I like to send compressed, kind of shrink it as much over the network as possible, but we're good to go. Um, and we'll hit add task. Sorry, it forced me to pick a data set where I wanted to do the whole pool. I just picked the same top level pool as the pool rather than a subset. I'll hit add task. Okay, now we want to send off to the cloud. Um, we'll call it cloud rep. And we want to go down to cloud sync task. We use our clone behind the scenes to enable this. And what we would do here is we have no remotes currently set up. So we'd create new one and we'd call this, well, uh, remote one, right? And then, so this is the cool thing. You've got a bunch of uh, uh, predetermined cloud providers that we've set up for you. Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Cloud, Azure, Backblaze B2, Wasabi, Amazon, uh, Ceph, if you've got a Ceph cluster running S3, you can send it there. And some other ID Drive, E2, Storage A. Uh, these two actually, these last one's fun. People asked those after we told them the first time, so we added them in for you. If there's any other um, cloud providers that you want to work with, let us know. Um, but in this case, I'd go, I want to go with Backblaze. So then I'd put in my account information and I'd save the remote. Okay? So when you finish saving that remote, it would show up here and you would pick up select the type of the Arclone transfer you want to do. So do you want to copy all the data? Do you want to move it over? I definitely don't want to move it because I want it in both locations. But I want to keep it in bidirectional sync. In my case, I just want to copy. I want everything over. So I'm going to do that. And then we get to pick the direction of where we want it to go. So by default, it's going to send from your local place to the offsite cloud location. Or we could pull it down. In our case, we just want to push it. Um, Specify the local path of where we want to go. So I'd write this out to, I think it was active storage. I just want to send everything. And then the target path would be the name of the uh, um, uh, directory that you'd create in the Backblaze utility. Um, and you hit add task and la di da, everything would start. And you'd be sending your data boom, off site to the other data center to keep everything safe to another ZFS box that you own. And then also to the um, cloud provider that you picked, in our case, Backblaze. Um, and then when that meteor comes that was only going to take out that one data center, comes and smashes everything, you can then go get probably your offsite server, bring that back, put that in your building. And then um, if there's any data missing, anything like that, you can sync it from the other place. But that's the point is, is you are now protected against that final scary peril. Um, we joke about the metaphorical metaphor, but very seriously, that all too real flooding, fire, theft of, of, of the actual whole device of what you need, and you can pull data back from another location. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our final peril video, and therefore the end of this series together of where we, we talked about the perils as we laid it out in the other big full-length video where we talked more about the philosophy of our best practice ideas and stuff like that, which I recommend you check out if you haven't seen yet. We'll link it somewhere. I'll let them figure that out, but you'll find it pretty easy. Um, check that out. That brings us to the end of this, like I said, where we, where we talked about um, putting the rubber on the road, how you take those philosophical ideas, how you build that, how you take a 45 drive storage server, and then use the pieces of software in Houston to, to um, well, to enable your peaceful sleep as you don't have to worry about your perils anymore. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I hope you got something out of it. And uh, as always, reach out, comment, any other way you want to get in hold of us and uh, tell us more about what you want to hear. So catch you next time.